The following is an excerpt from a panel discussion held October 30th at Monroe County Community College. If you'd like to hear the entire recording, look up the Monroe News at your favorite podcast service. Because there are statistics, there are facts, there are opinions, why don't you look it up yourself? Just look up Washington, Colorado, traffic, deaths, marijuana. Google it. See what you see. You won't see that they're going down or not increasing. You'll see exactly the opposite. And you will see law enforcement saying, please don't make the same mistake that we did in Colorado. Here's another one. Posh neighborhoods turn to pot. Okay? It was on national news explaining about the cartels from Cuba that are coming into Colorado and setting up inside their homes. And if you want to laugh and make faces, go ahead and do that. I'll look it up laugh. and read it. Okay. Okay. Educate okay. yourself. Right. Okay. No, no, no. I just, uh, state, now, I, I will read this. Point. I will read this. Oh, In Washington State, marijuana impaired driving fatalities have more than doubled. One in five driver, drivers are under the influence of marijuana. That is up from one to ten prior to legalization. 62% of respondents who reported using marijuana and driving said they didn't think it impaired their ability to drive at all. That's the Washington Traffic Safety Commission. Look it up. I'm not spewing one fact okay. or one group. All right, I'm now, saying, now, look it up yourself. I'll, I'll, I'll let someone else go, go next, but let me make uh, let me make a statement. Yeah, let me make myself very clear. Uh, response to the questions with the audience. No interaction, unless you're responding directly to a question. No interaction with each other here in the, in the panel, unless it's legitimate interaction, whatever that means, right? So let's just, uh, okay, so does anyone have a statement? And no, uh, you know, snickering or additional, I'm not, I'm not hearing any, but additional comments or what have you. And none of that from the audience either. Uh, bouncers, are you ready? There's Randy Daniel, my bouncer right there. He's, yes, and we will bounce you folks. All right, uh, okay, let's get another, and then we'll move on. Before before we get a state, who is there another question in the audience? Okay, so there are questions in the audience that we need to get to. So let me get one more statement on this. Okay, so just to address some of the other, I would say, oh. unbiased and peer-reviewed, scientifically sound sources of information on traffic fatalities related to marijuana use. Some meta-analyses that were recently published in 2018 um, looked at early evidence of recreational marijuana legalization and traffic fatalities where. Um, driver, at least one driver tested positive for THC, increasing by 10% nationally from 2013 to 2016, where operation of recreational marijuana dispensaries was associated with a 9.2% increase in fatalities in Washington State and Colorado from 2009 to 2016. These are researchers from reputable institutions that conduct secondary data analyses on existing data, and um, they have no reason to modify those results, and they're unbiased entirely in the scientific community. Um, risk of DUI and marijuana use um, due to marijuana use among adolescents is influenced by policy level factors. So these are some social science reports looking at how the changing of social norms, making marijuana use a normative behavior, thus legalizing recreational use, makes students have lower students. Um, adolescents and young drivers have lower perceived risk of marijuana use, thus making them feel more comfortable getting behind the wheel and increasing the frequency that we are issuing. Um, driving while impaired with marijuana. All right, so patients. we're hearing conflicting statistics and students. How many of the students in here? All my students, <coughs> all of you. You can do this research for yourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So go out there and find out for yourselves. And I think Randy said that. One more statement on this, and then we will turn. There are a lot of questions. <laughs> the audience have a lot of questions, folks. No one in support of the ballot is suggesting that. Anyone under the age of 21 use marijuana. So the suggestions of the statistics are not a, uh, are not something that anyone's advocating. You know, reduction in development is not an issue that we're we're here to to debate at this particular time because it's designed for adults only. But there are certain statistics that people should consider in terms of what and how uh, Michigan has spent its time and energy over the last uh, 10 years. And I think this goes to the credibility of the opposition. And, now, and I will tell you this, I, I'm a lawyer, I go to court every day and I talk to police officers who come to court and defend the arrests. And I will tell you that they often say to me, they should just legalize it already. Now, that may be different than the upper echelon as, uh, and the uh, top tier individuals, 
But maybe there's something to do with this. We found out that the Michigan State Forensic Science Division spends 40% of its budget testing marijuana. 40%. This is a statement made by the former director. In the same, same breath, he said, and that's why we've been unable to get to the rape kits which remain on the shelves. From his mouth, the next statement was, maybe legalization will help us. Now, can we all agree, if we were to prioritize where budget resources are supposed to be spent, it would be on catching rapists and trying to find rapists instead of mar possessing marijuana? Isn't that a fair uh, trade-off? And the 74% of, uh, of convictions in Michigan are related to marijuana. 30% for rape. That's nothing to boast about. The community at large from the law enforcement side has been uh, disappointing in their catching serious criminals. There's nothing to boast about getting uh, forfeiture proceeds and arresting 21,000 adults every year and spending in 2010 $91 million. Senate's uh, analysis identifies $91 million of resource in 2010 spent on prosecuting and punishing for marijuana, including the court system. Now, you go to any district court or circuit court any day of the week in Michigan, 40% of the docket is made up of marijuana cases. Okay. Why do you think that there's a desire of these law enforcement leaders to keep this money train going? It keeps them coming to court, gets their overtime. They have, right. <coughs> I think you have a point. I think you have a point. I think you